TCM is always talking about uh, being in sync with nature. So there are roughly about four key principles. Number one is your body is an integrated whole. The second one is we are completely connected to nature. The third one is we are all born with a natural self-healing ability. Last one is uh, prevention is the best cure. Welcome to another episode of Shift with Shubra. I am your host, Shubra Benetti. And today's episode, we will be learning all about traditional Chinese medicine, or TCM for short, as it's commonly known here in Singapore. So traditional Chinese medicine has been around, it's been around for thousands of years. It's, um, the basic concept is that the force of life, or called tea, uh, surges through the body and that mostly imbalances of the T is what causes disease and illness to basically come about. So how do we really tap into our T for a healthier mind and body? Well, today we're going to be interviewing Dr. Lim, Dr. Xiang Jun Lim, and she's going to be helping us understand a little bit more about TCM today. So Dr. Lim holds a doctorate degree in acupuncture and Chinese medicine and has been in the field of practice for about well, for more than 15 years since 2005. So she spent more than seven years in Beijing to deeply explore the wisdom applied to the philosophies behind traditional Chinese medicine. And she's also very well versed in various energy medicines and healing therapies that help the body balance holistically and energetically. So if you've always wondered what really is the deal with traditional Chinese medicine, how does it work? Why do they use these uh, types of therapies? What are they, you know, how are they beneficial to your body? And where can you get more information? Are they applicable to children? Then you've come to the right place. And I hope you enjoy this episode that is so full of content based on, on traditional Chinese medicine. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this uh, episode with those who might benefit from this episode. And comment below and let us know what you thought and if you have any ideas for future episode content. Thank you so much and enjoy the episode. I just wanted to maybe uh, if you could share with the listeners and viewers uh, your journey, like how come you got into TCM, tradi traditional Chinese medicine, what areas do you focus in, why, things like that. For me, is after my college, yeah, then uh, we have to choose the university like subjects that we want to study. So I always wanted to go into medicine or science. Uh. The course of uh, biomedicine and TCM came up. It was the first time in Singapore, yeah, be between two universities collaboration. So, and um, from young, I'm also exposed more to TCM than Western. Yeah, when I take Western medicine, my body will become very weak. So my mom usually after that will bring me to TCM. Yeah, then it feels much better also. And yeah, so I'm exposed to that. Then during college days, I had a very bad back issue, like almost like a sleep disc. So during that time, I was much exposed to acupuncture. Then after that, I was very inspired by my doctor. <laughs> yeah, how she treated me. And then I was like, okay. Then I had that subconscious imprint. I want to become acupuncture. <laughs> yeah, so then thereafter, during university, yeah, I just started out uh, yeah, studying both subjects at the same time. So biomedicine and TCM. No. And then after... Um, I carry on with TCM in China, then uh, for master's and doctorate. Yeah, so that's how I become who I am today. So do you have, um, do you do a specific specialty with your TCM practice? Or are you kind of like general TCM, like any, any problem come to me kind of thing? Or you focus on a demographic? Yeah, so for... Uh, Chinese medicine right, is kind of different from Western because they specialize according to the conditions of the patients. But for TCM, we are more focused on like the modalities, yeah, how we treat. So when I specialize at the master's and doctorate level, I chose acupuncture. 
Okay. So they divide us into like uh, acupuncture specialization or herbology or qigong or this. Yeah, so I chose acupuncture. Then basically the conditions I see is all kinds. Yeah, so it's the modality wise. But as of now, I also integrate many other healing modalities as well. So, but acupuncture is just one of the main ones. Yeah. Okay. And what other, I mean, let's back, let's back up a little bit. So in TCM, what are like the key principles of TCM and how would you diagnose an issue? So for the key principles, right, basically TCM is always talking about uh, being in sync with nature. Yeah, so there are roughly about four key principles. Like uh, number one is your body is an integrated whole. So that's why when you come to me with like multiple issues, right? There is some linkages to them. When, so when our diagnosis we do, it's more of we are finding out what's the root organs or the meridians that is uh, being affected. Because along that line, that's how you feel all the different symptoms. Yeah, then we will tackle through the root of the issues. Then you will feel actually as a whole, you become better. So this is very different from Western medicine where you go to the doctor, you, te you tell them you have um, thyroid issues and then you have uh, cyst and fibroid issue. Then they will treat you in two different departments. But actually in TCM, uh, when I treat, it's under the same, uh, it's because of most probably liver, meridian or liver organ that is out of balance. So then when I tackle from there, actually both issues will be resolved at the same time. So that's how this is number one, like we see the whole person as the person as a whole, like an integrated whole. And we don't just focus on one condition. So that's why when I say I specialize in acupuncture and not in a certain kind of conditions, it's because I will treat you as a whole. <laughs> yeah. So not like I just focus on one, which is too uh, microscopic, uh, I would say. Yeah, then the second one is um, like we are completely connected to nature. So basically we see the body as a small representation of the whole universe. You carry all the elements in the universe as well. So like um, in TCM, we talk about five elements, fire, water, earth, metal, and wood. Yes, so <laughs> these are the elements that also exist in nature as well. So if you find that your body becomes unhealthy, a lot of times you will also realize somehow in your life, things are also not going very well as well. Or like there are changes in your environment, it will, you will start to feel it in your body as well. Yeah, so we are interconnected. So either you uh, improve the situation by improving your health or you do some changes to your natural environment and your body will become better. Yeah, so that's uh, the second principle. Then the third one is we are all born with a natural self-healing ability. So basically what we see you is um, the body is the medicine itself, especially for acupuncture, because that's basically we are using needles to stimulate the points on your body. Yeah, and then just do the re uh, rebalancing using your body as the medicine. We are not giving anything, we are just stimulating the body to rebalance by itself. Yeah, uh, this is uh, quite prominent in acupuncture. Herbology-wise, like herbs, we will use herbs, like give a bit extra, but at least herbs, they are still much natural from the uh, nature. So we are just using the properties of the herbs to um, balance, help balance the body. Yeah, so it's still tapping on the body self-healing ability. So we see the human as like highly having high potential to heal by itself. And sometimes you just come to us because you need an extra push for the rebalance to happen. Because sometimes you are already so imbalanced, the body is already trapped in that imbalance loop. So you need something else to just break that loop. Yeah, which is us. <laughs> yeah. So that's the third one. And then um, last one is uh, prevention is the best cure. We always talk about prevention and not let yourself wait until... Uh, you are ill or some physiological um, like growth actually already uh, came out in your body, uh, then you do the treatment because it's like uh, digging the well when you're already much thirsty. So from the start, 
when you are healthy, that time you should do the maintenance. It's very important we talk about that prevention and maintenance because that's where your body is most balanced. And if there is any kind of imbalance, the imbalance is not that much. So it's easy to rectify. When you already have a imbalance like a growth or a like Western medicine diagnosed illness, it's already quite late. And then a lot of effort needs to be taken to rectify already. So that's why the sessions, all these will just pile up. Mm. And then, yeah, and because um, TCM, we work a lot with nature. Yeah, just keeping things as natural as possible. We are not using like chemicals or this. So it takes time. And usually that's why a lot of people can't uh, hold on, don't have the patience yeah, for that to happen. Yeah, so we always don't want that. So right from the start, when you are healthy, you maintain that. Right. Yeah, that's the that's the yeah last key principle. And mm -hmm. in terms of like diagnosing the issues, I mean, do you guys use blood tests? Like, how do you guys diagnose an issue? TCM practitioners, basically the modern one now, we should be able to also read blood tests or this. But the traditional methods is we have four kinds in Chinese when we learn. So it's called Wang Wen Wen Qie. But in English translation is into five methods. Yeah, so it's looking, listening, smelling, asking, and touching. So basically, uh, when you walk into my clinic, we will look at you as a person and just assess your energy level and everything. So um, my mentor actually has a saying like, um, when the patient enter your clinic room for the first seven steps, you should be able to roughly tell what's the issue. Yeah, so that's how we train ourselves like the intuitive um, sense first of the energy level. Then the listening is like we will um, listen to how your breath or cough or like uh, those issues that you're having. We will listen, yeah, like what's the quality of the sounds that you're making of the issues, yeah. So that's another one. Smelling also sometimes when uh, there are certain conditions, we can smell certain things. This is also in uh, Western medicine, especially for diabetes. We are able to smell the patient's uh, body odor and roughly know, yeah, he may be having a diabetic issues or blood glucose issue. Then also asking, meaning we will ask you your history itself like uh, what have you been through or is there certain uh, injury incidents that you have been through that's why you have this pain or what we will ask so it's not like we are magicians <laughs> we will still ask okay <laughs> just to get a more detailed um, diagnosis as well your history and everything and sometimes when we ask we also can have a feel of there may be underlying issues that uh, the patients may not want to say yeah so that's the um, later on how we can develop ourselves as practitioners. Yeah. Then the last one is touching. Touching is either the palpitation of that area that uh, the person comes to us for the issues or also another one is pulse diagnosis, basically. This is uh, one of the most characteristic in TCM. So we will uh, feel the pulse at the wrist area of both hands. Yeah, just to feel like, um, because for pulse ticking, we are not actually taking the um, heart rate only because a lot of people thought we are just taking heart rate or what, but that is just one small part. We are actually feeling the quality of the pulse because there are many theories in pulse taking. So uh, one of them that I learned is each finger actually represents different organs yeah, in the body. So our fingers, uh, for us during our training, we have to just keep, uh, pulse taking a lot of patients just to feel like what's the quality and the quality of the pulse itself will tell like what's the issue inside the body yeah like some uh, we have diagnosis like if that part feels like a pearl rolling on a plate that sort of thing yeah that's our description of the quality of the pulse and it represents certain things inside the body yeah Mm, then, oh, I missed out another one, which is tongue diagnosis also. So we also, these are the two pulse diagnosis and tongue diagnosis. We will look at the tongue as well. The tongue itself, it also shows a lot uh, of the inside of the body. Yeah, yeah. And different parts, the coloration, the shape, the size will also tell a lot 
of the insides of the body. So basically, we are like investigators. We use all this that is showing on the outside of you to know what is happening inside you as a whole. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And then, do you also, as part of guidance, obviously with the therapies, you sort of tell your patients what your tongue should look like, <laughs> or <laughs> you mean the classic tongue? Uh? <laughs> we have a classic like tongue that you should be having, but usually, usually, most people are not having that because we as humans, we are dynamic. And all the time we are in a state of fluctuations uh, from the state of imbalance. This is physics also, like everything is in the state of disorder. So that's the thing about TCM. That's why we always want to strive towards balancing and not fluctuate out too much. So there is, um, but I, I wouldn't like tell the patients you should be having this one yeah, because it will just uh, make them worry and everything. And then they will just <laughs> keep seeing their tongue every day. So... Yeah, but I will just see and I'll roughly know because uh, when they come to me, definitely there's some issues. So tongue is just one of the small evidence I can get mm. yeah, to just make up the whole uh, diagnosis, what it is. Okay, so then in terms of, you mentioned briefly about um, acupuncture, which mm. people are quite... Um, familiar with because it's involving needles at certain pressure points and things like that or certain points of the body what other tcm therapeutic techniques do you do and and what are the significance because once i've seen like cups being on mm. back so some there's a lighting of like a giant incense stick looks like kind of thing yeah I, so can you just tell me uh maybe <laughs> some of the common therapies and what do they do so some of them, yeah, acupuncture is one. The one that the cups one is basically called cupping. Yeah, so we use the glass cup and we use fire to create a vacuum inside the cups and we just put over the body. Yeah, that's another one modality. Then uh, the one, the incense one is called moxibustion. So we are using a herb called moxa or mugwort and we just roll it into the incense stick. We burn and then it's a little bit like smudging. Yeah. But we are using that um, to just hover over certain acupoints or certain areas. Yeah, and let the properties of the herb seep through the pores of the skin. So yeah, that's another modality. What, what's the properties of mugworth that makes it so important to hover over those certain uh, points? Uh, one thing is mugwort because it's very commonly found uh, in China olden days also. And it's quite easily accessible now as well. And it burns good. Yeah, so that's why is most of the time we use that. But some of the doctors I follow in China, they use other herbs as well. They will mix in other things. And mark what because also it burns easily, la. Yeah. Then the properties itself because it uh, moves the blood circulation very well. Yeah, and it's very easily absorbed by the body. So that's why it's called moxibustion. But as a whole, actually, you can add in other herbs yourself, yeah, and let that happen. Then another modality is herbology. Lah. So basically, it's herbal prescriptions. So herbal prescription, the very traditional one is we will use the real herbs, the dry one, and then just brew. <laughs> then it's like uh, some, I mean, it's still practice, and actually, it's the best efficacy, but because everyone is so busy now, so now there are powder form tinctures, liquid form, which also works, yeah, that's another one, then um, energy healing as well, it's called qigong, yeah, uh, it's not very common, yeah, but it's still practiced, because in China, my school at least, there is a department for qigong, so, <laughs> and people actually study that for doctors, so I guess it's really, yeah, they have their users, but yeah, this one is the energy healing in TCM also, qigong is another one, yeah, so mainly these are the few. La. And what, how does cupping work, like why do you create the vacuum and then put cups, and, and what's the methodology, like what is it supposed to be doing? So cupping, the traditional one, uh, yeah, as I said, you will use the fire and then create the vacuum. The modern one now, they are using like vacuum, like they just use a pump, which I feel doesn't really, uh, I mean, it's good also, but it just taps on the suction effect. But the traditional one, it has the suction effect and the fire effect. So why? Because um, cupping actually uh, for pain conditions, 
uh, physically, it will just stretch out the muscle fibers. Yeah, so it will just lengthen the muscles, muscle fibers. A lot of times, stiffness, all this, the muscle fibers will be all scrunched up. So when you do cupping over, it just pulls up the muscles uh, and just lengthen it. Yeah, then also um, with the fire elements, it helps to remove dampness all this and also improve the blood circulation because fire energy it will move things yeah and it will burn out toxins also so that's why i will for me i use more of the fire cupping rather than the pump yeah so that's roughly how cupping is being used but uh depending on the physician also they may use it for many other conditions so but the reasoning behind is like that yeah that we uh, tap on the suction effect and the fire effect Okay, and then can we, we just touch a little bit upon acupuncture, because I know um, there are some physios, for example, they use dry needling, which is mm. to release, I guess, tension in the muscles, right? To tightness the muscles, they release it by using dry needling. Is yeah. acupuncture sort of like that, but a little bit more um, high, you know, high level? This one, I have actually talked about it in one of my blogs. So actually, acupuncture, TCM, all this, the history dates back like, some say 2,000, some say 5,000. So, I mean, the whole set of theory is also uh, different. Like, they have their own meridians, theory, all this. So, I would say for dry needling, because I do work with a lot of physios as well. Some of them, they use dry needling as well. Um, I would say it's a subset from acupuncture because what I learned from them is they actually go for the trigger points. And when I ask them about the trigger points, a lot of them overlap with acupuncture points and the number of trigger points is much much lesser than acupuncture points yeah so and uh, for dry needling they don't really let they are just uh, trying to get a spasm from like a twitch from the muscle yeah to have the uh, immediate release from the muscle uh, spasm yeah so um, that is actually one method one technique in acupuncture it's called swift needling yeah but because dry needling it yeah, it actually developed from that. And for acupuncture wise, we leave the needles on. Yeah, we, uh, that's the traditional one. So leaving the needles on has its own effects because we are working on the whole meridian and energy channels and also like the muscle groups if you want to talk about scientific. So when you leave it on, it's like a combination of things happening. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, it's just a combination, like a train like that. Yeah, to let things slowly unravel along the whole pathway. So that's the reason why acupuncture we leave the needles on. Uh, then dry needling, they just go for the twitch only. Yeah, dry needling is much more developed in uh, Western side. So uh, that's why they are just more focused on the muscle, muscular groups, myofascia. They don't really talk about energy meridian. So, I mean, for acupuncture, what I know is on top of muscular groups, physiological things, we talk about energy meridians. So I would still think it's uh, dry needling is a subset. Because I, I would imagine, yes, the dry needling was just a tiny part and then really TCM was like a whole body, like intricate high level picture. Um, you were talking about energy meridians and in terms of acupuncture. I think that's a common, uh, people have this idea that, oh, TCM works on meridian points, meridian points. Okay, great. What is meridian points? Meridian points, basically the body is, I mean, everything is energy. So the body itself is also full of energy. So meridian points, meridian itself is just energy lines within the body. Okay. Yeah, like that. that is being linked up along the whole body, along the organs. Yeah. So points, meridian points or acute points, basically they are just uh, points along the energy lines where it has a concentration of that energy. So we call it energy vortexes also. Okay. So in that point, it actually holds a lot more energy. And in scientific terms, actually the, some, I think there are researchers who did uh, research on what is acupuncture points. And what they found, they inject a... Uh, a, tra a, tra a tracer or something like that. Yeah, and they found that the points, acupuncture points, uh, when they tally it with the physiological body, they are aggregates of like nerve endings, glandular endings, uh, vascular endings. So they are like concentration of that. So I will believe that's why we go for acupuncture, we will uh, acupuncture the points to just bring about like a whole train of reaction to the lines 
yeah, and just let the balancing happen, yeah, for like the nervous system, glandular system, everything will just reset itself. And then energy level wise, yeah, because we tap on the vortexes of the energy line. So we are just like pulling the string. Yeah, the string of the whole line and just make it balance or smoothen out. Yeah, because a lot of times illnesses is either blockages, stagnations. Yeah. So what we do is we tap on that those points. These are like the the how do you call it uh? like <laughs> the main switch uh, joins there yeah then we just do something to it and just smoothen out the whole thing yeah mm, okay and in terms of uh chi energy obviously qi gong is all about the chi energy can you mm. explain what the fundamental concept of T energy is like why is it so important for the balancing of of elements or what is how how does it work for our well-being and our health uh T energy basically T is just a vital life force okay. yeah so uh it's just energy within us and as i said also the body itself is a small universe by itself Mm. So, and as humans, we are not just at the muscular, physical, flesh level. A lot of things is we have thoughts, we have um, the decision-making process, all this. Yeah, so this, uh, uh, we are beyond just mechanical beings. So this, uh, and why we are able to do that, we have free will, all this. That's what uh, we call it, is because we have teeth. Yeah, yeah. So that's why if a person is ill or what, the T either is blocked or it's just imbalanced. Yeah. So and then all the decision making and how he manages his life, all this will be also very off balance as well. So we always, always want to come back to this vital life force. Yeah, just to get it smoothened out. Because once it's smoothed out, um uh it's how to say. This vital life force is also come from nature as well. So once it's con like smoothened out, you will also be connected to the nature. Yeah, and all the uh, elements, all this will also be in par with the nature. Right. Mm. Okay. And uh, for, so I'm in the space of uh, prenatal, postnatal women because I deal with babies and sleep and things like that. Um, mm. Can I know that people can use TCM in terms of fertility to try and get pregnant? Can mm. pregnant women still go for TCM for issues? Like, do pregnant women go for TCM? And is there also some TCM um, therapies that are great for postpartum healing? Mm, definitely. So, for uh, pregnant mothers, they can still go for TCM, but because um, pregnant mothers, their body physiology is slightly, is much different already. So, and there's a lot of uh, restrictions and a lot of things to watch out for because we want to retain the baby. Yeah, and uh, so if, uh, I will advise to go for a really skilled and professional TCM practitioner because he or she will know what to do to handle the pregnant mother because if not, it's actually quite dangerous. Yeah, and yeah, if they... Uh, stimulate the wrong points or this is possible that the body uh, the baby can come out yeah so that's the thing it's, it's still okay but just need to find someone that really knows what he or she is doing and then postpartum healing definitely is very good <laughs> yes and uh, yeah all the things that we talk about like illnesses of mothers like in the later ages or this yeah postpartum that period of time in not say in TCM, I think in Western medicine, they also talk about it, like confinement or this, right? So during this period of time, yeah, it's actually a very critical period of time for the mother to take care of uh, herself. Because after birth, it's really a great loss of uh, T, vital force and uh, blood. So the body is actually very weak. And it's, when the body is very weak, it's very susceptible to illnesses. Like it's easily catching a lot of exogenous factors like wind, dampness, all this. It will, it will just trap all this thing inside. So during postpartum is definitely, I would advise all mothers to go for TCM. Yeah, because if you go for, um, not say Western medicine is not good, but Western medicine, they don't talk about many other aspects. And then uh, for TCM, we encompass a lot more things. Yeah, 
then uh, which a lot of times when mothers are in their later years, like are nearing menopause or what, they will have issues surfacing that they realize like they don't know why they have it. But when you ask them further, it actually can trace back to when uh, after postpartum, they never take good care of themselves. So we call it, it will already set the root of the illness then already. And it will, yeah, and it will surface when you are getting older, when your body is weakening and aging. Uh, I will encourage all mothers to go for some TCM like uh, treatments or just modalities to take care of themselves. Because for TCM, it's not just about treatment. As I said, it's also prevention and maintenance. Yeah, yeah. it's just maintaining the health also. Mm. And in terms of, like, can we just talk a little bit about that postpartum period? Like, mm. I um, I ordered the herbs, like, I ordered the 28 days herbs and the soups. And I, I mean, I don't come from a confinement background, you know. Um, I, we never, we don't, ha- we have a concept of that in Indian culture to a certain mm. extent. Um, but we don't have this extensive in terms of, like, the meals that yeah. was presented in the package why what what are these herbs and these soups doing like why these particular herbs what are they doing in terms of that healing and and care for the postpartum woman so uh during we call it the confinement month so it's like the four weeks period of time is the critical period so uh if for detailed like planning some of the doctors they actually plan like week one is actually focused on renourishing of blood renourishing of uh, tea all this then week two is about the uh, other uh, like in like uh, the directions of the tea should go up or what so but mainly mainly is to replenish the mum in terms of tea and blood yeah and then get the healing at the uh vagina all this to really heal properly yeah and also get the pelvic floor there to heal properly if not um yeah and another one is also to move the the energy upwards because if not uh if they didn't take good care a lot of prolapse of the uterine all this will happen yeah because your T one thing is weak when it's weak it will go downwards yeah so we all, we talk about not just the quality amount of the T and blood we also talk about directions in TCM, yeah. So sometimes, uh, when it's very weak, the all the directions will go down. Then you will have a lot of prolapse, and then sometimes bleeding, all this happening still. Yeah. So it's more focused on just replenishing the mom, and then uh, give it, uh, like just help with the recovery, uh. Because for birth is, I mean, it's a kind of trauma also to the mom. I would say. Yeah, so definitely after that, you need to do all the self-care and everything. Yeah, especially if people are planning for a second baby or what. Yeah, you have to, if not every time giving birth, yeah, you will just lose a lot of tea and blood. And actually, and if you don't take care, as I said, you will catch a lot of uh, exogenous factors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it will make you fall sick. Or you may not feel uh, sick at that point of time, but it will, have, it will surface somewhere down the line. Right, right. And for babies, do you also, does, is there TCM treatments that are available for babies? Like how old should a baby be? What type of treatments are available for what kind of ailments? So uh, for babies, because they are so tiny and small, so uh, we have a modality called pediatric massage. So it's something like, I think Western, they also have it like postnatal massage or something like that. Yeah, for babies. And, but we call it pediatric massage and it's mainly focused on acupoints, meridians. We have a whole set of theory for pediatric massage. Yeah, and uh, it's for babies. Uh, the textbook answer is from six months to six years old is the golden period for pediatric massage. For general wellness or if there is illness, it can treat illness also. So, but for my from my experience, what I believe is uh, when the baby can already already come out, yeah, be in the house already and not uh, stay in the hospital, actually can already start with the pediatric massage. So, um, yeah, so the because baby it does um, their body is very sensitive, yeah. So they don't need like stimulation from needles or like uh, cupping all this is 
for adults because our nervous system is more dulled already when we grow up. For them, their nervous system is still very active. So actually just by light, uh, lightly touching them or stroking them, it can create a lot of difference for their body already. Right. So, um, and for pediatric massage, basically if you have no illness, like the baby has no illness, it will actually help with a lot of things like the IQ, EQ, motor, sensory, nervous system, all this. Yeah, because we are stimulating the cells in the body, uh, in the baby's body to still develop. So because they are still growing very fast. So at this point of time, you give it this kind of stimulation at the right points, uh, right method, it will help develop the brain, the spinal cord and everything, the growth of the baby much faster. And um, yeah, mainly that. Yeah, and also pediatric massage because you touch. Mm. Yeah, so it also creates a closeness with the mom. Yeah, and also closeness with human beings as well. So that's the EQ part. That's why the baby will grow up to be not scared of humans and is good with interpersonal relation skills. Mm. Nice. Okay, so then how do moms learn about this pediatric massage? Like, do they need to come and meet a TCM doctor, for example, bring the baby and mm. learn it that way? Or are there classes? Are there group classes? Um, how, how do they learn? So... Um, yeah, you can learn. <laughs> yeah, there are some, I think there may be some causes around. Yeah, some simple strokes for just general wellness. Yeah, there are some few ones. But uh, if you want like to do the full set or what, it will be good to go to a TCM practitioner because we learn already how to do it. And most of the time along the growing up the journey, the baby will still have some imbalances here and there. Maybe like bloating or cannot sleep well, that sort of thing. Yeah, then we will also change the method of uh, stroking because it can go very subtle. Like either I do it clockwise, anti-clockwise, how deep I go. Yeah, it can be so subtle. But for parents wise, we are, you can learn the general one and just do at a very normal uh, stroke or technique. Yeah, just for general, uh, everyday kind of maintenance. But I would say still, it would be better to still go to a doctor and then maybe just once a week or twice a week. Yeah, and definitely with if the baby has illness or what, have to go to a TCM doctor. Yeah, then we'll do the right uh, method. Yeah, to help the baby. Okay, and. Mm. Uh, in your opinion, when should a person go to a Western medicine doctor and when should a person go to a TCM doctor? Like based on, on their symptoms, for example, what they're going through, when would it be better to consider a TCM doctor instead of Western medicine, if that makes sense? Mm, for me, I will say like some of my patients, uh, they come like, <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Because they thought I know everything, so yeah, I will just be able to like diagnose them. But I would say if they feel acute pain or what, like those very sharp, uh, yeah, that requires a lot of emergency care, one, you it's better to go for Western. Yeah, those that need immediate action, one. Yeah, it'll be better to go directly to Western because they will do all the checks and everything. Yeah, and see physically what is happening. And then for those who are like more chronic, uh, yeah, sort of issues, then you can approach a TCM doctor. But even in my clinic, if you have a issue, um, which I feel that with Western checks, it can help to exclude certain things. Then after that, you carry on the journey of treating with me. I will still direct you to a Western doctor first. Yeah, just to clear out some of the things that I suspect may have. Because sometimes it can be cyst fibroid, but you come to me with just bloating issues or what. But if I suspect that, then I will still point you to do a Western check first. So it's not like I totally rule out the Western medicine because they have their own uh, benefits. Yeah, so I will still send people to just go for the checks. Yeah, just to rule out the physiological uh, part first. Then if it's all good at the physical level, then it will be functional already, which is my job. Yeah. Then everything will be safe. If not, sometimes we have situations where some people may have cancer already. Then if you hold on to them for so long, but they are still suffering, then yeah, it's not going to work. Right. Right, right, right. Okay. Fair enough. So 
in terms of like just general advice for people in in with TCM principles, what's a blanket advice that you'd like to give? Um, you know, let's say let's choose a demographic. Let's choose like pregnant pregnant moms. You know, expecting moms right now. If you were to give some blanket advice from a TCM perspective, what would be some of the advice that you would give? Pregnant moms, uh, <laughs> maybe <laughs> pregnant moms. I would say go to someone that she feels comfortable with to share the issues with. Yeah, and uh, also check out the credentials. Yeah, of the doctor first because pregnant moms is really sensitive this issue. Yeah, yeah. So they. They have to be really comfortable and confident in the doctor before they embark any treatment. Eh? Yeah, because there's a life out there. <laughs> so yeah, the first I mean the doctor needs to know how to really handle and also understand like each trimester what is happening also. Mm. Okay. And in terms of like everyone's kind of going through a little bit of um an energy, a low T energy feeling at the moment because of COVID, because mm-hmm. like a breaker has ended in terms of things that open, but still there's a sense of like low energy because we never really know where the end of this COVID situation is coming through. Is there mm-hmm. anything that they could probably access with TCM to help boost their T a bit? So if you feel uh, like low energy, you can go for this point, which is at the hand. So uh, it's at the intersection between the thumb and the index finger. So there is, when these two fingers yeah, meet, there is an indent. So the puncture points are points, like they are really vortexes. So actually, uh, when you feel it, it's either you will feel a lot of soreness or you really will feel an indentation there. So you can just look for the intersection and then press. Another way is you use the other hand, the left hand thumb. Okay, the first segment then you just put over the just put over the webbing and then just yeah press in and this is the point but main thing about acupoints is there's no strict like pinpoint because every human is different and how we locate points are also like depending on your body length and all this so that's why you feel when you feel the soreness then it's the right point already. right right so this point is uh is a very general point but it's always good for like increasing t energy or moving t energy okay yeah this is the very very general one (laughs) so everyone can just basically just massage it or just like press on it a couple of times a day yeah okay yes so just massage it especially because most of us are working from home at desk also yeah so you uh yeah when you feel just like down the weather then you just press here but i would still suggest uh everyday exercise yeah, that's the main thing. Get yourself moving. Yeah, outdoors is better actually still the with the nature because uh, coming in touch with nature, I mean, the nature itself, it will do its job to just balance you out. Yeah, and you have to move. Mm. Yes, agreed. Agreed very much so. And finally, like, what is the shift that you want to create with your work for the well-being of others? I will still say uh, maybe to bring the image of TCM uh, much better and uh, yeah just maybe make it upgrade it to a level that is in par with western medicine because until now I still feel people still doesn't believe too much in TCM in, in the sense that they feel that it's still unscientific a lot of things but uh, I would say western medicine um, the history and everything is just a few hundred years then uh, and it's supported by technology but for traditional Chinese medicine it's almost thousand years already but a lot of theories they don't change and usually when I feel that if the theories doesn't change and it can withstand time then it really holds something there yeah so um, yeah and uh, I just feel ancient medicines they hold more wisdom uh, than western medicine yeah and science is just Science is still an explanation, uh, it's a way of explaining things. And I believe TCM, a lot of things is explaining about uh, the nature and the universe already. It's just uh, the methodology of, um, how to say, methodology of researching into TCM doesn't fit 
it's just an unfit, yeah, it's just a not in not in line with each other, but and then the results from science doesn't uh, show positive results for TCM, but it doesn't mean that TCM doesn't work. So if you can't catch the results using your method, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. <laughs> it's just you need to upgrade your research method. Yeah, so we have to get through that and yeah, and just not refute uh, TCM first. Yeah, just wait a while and yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Lin. And I hope uh, if anyone out there is looking for TCM uh, therapies, please contact Dr. Lim. Her contact details will be listed in the show notes below. So thank you so much again, Dr. Lim. 